Well, thanks to uh, Mark and the, uh, the club. This is an awesome venue, and uh, we appreciate your hospitality. Um, just super, super excited. Um, I was fortunate enough to you know, come here a year ago, and, and instantly I was kind of struck by not just Nas's talent, but his personality. Um, just a wonderful guy, as good a player as he is, he's a better person. Um, and to watch his growth from you know, undrafted, LSU, and his maturation, uh, both as a player and a person, couldn't be more fortunate. Um, he, the best basketball is in front of him. Um, I think he's just scratching the surface of who he's going to be as a player. Um, he's one of the more unique, I think, players that I've been around. Um, probably as good a handle as any big man I've ever seen. Um, he's just uh, an excellent teammate. He's been completely compliant and team first with any and everything that we've asked. And uh, you know, I know organization, we couldn't be more proud. It couldn't happen to a better person. So uh, thank you and well-deserved. Yeah, obviously, um, it's very excited to have Nas back. Um, very proud of Nas. I haven't been able to work with him the last few years. I think um, it's just a classic example of, of what uh, believing in yourself, hard work can do. Uh, going into the last season, you know, we were real honest with Nas with, some, with, the, with the acquisition of Rudy, um, you know, how that might impact him. And he never let it bother him. He always found a way to, to come out no matter what his role was. His role changed multiple times during the season, but it just kept his head down, stayed confident in himself, stayed ready. And from the get-go, he was uh, really important for us last, last year, just kind of getting some energy into our team as we were trying to figure some things out. Um, and then created this role for himself through uh, through some injuries. But the most exciting thing about it all is really what we saw right before, unfortunately, um, he went down with the hand injury, is the versatility to be able to play alongside of pretty much everybody in our roster, which is key to t today's game. Um, so we're really looking forward to building on that, growing into that, um, and just keep him getting better and better like he's been doing since he got into the league. Uh, I appreciate y'all believing in me to bring me back, uh, wanting to bring me back. Um, like you said before, I'm going to go out there and do what I do best, uh, play hard-nosed basketball, winning basketball. I get better each and every time I step on the court. Um, I'm dedicated to the game of basketball and uh, winning as well. So uh, whatever it takes, um, you know, I'm going to go out there and do what I do best. And, uh, you know, I'm, 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 winning. I'm looking forward to, you know, playing some winning basketball moving forward. We'll open it up to some questions here from the assembled media. We do have a uh, live microphone, so if you could state your name and your affiliation before asking your question, it'd be much appreciated. Chris, get us started. Chris Hine from the Star Tribune. Nas, what were the, the main factors for why you wanted to sign the deal when you did and, and not take it to free agency ultimately? I mean, ultimately, this is where I wanted to be. I started my career here. I wanted to continue my career here. I've gotten better each and every year here as well. So, I mean, it only made sense. Um, I didn't want to, you know, go anywhere else and uh, continue my journey th uh, this far. And, um, you know, I felt as though my teammates, Coach uh, Tim, everybody's been, you know, great to me and as a person and, then, you know, even coaching me on the court, coaching me off the court as well. So I uh, definitely wanted to, you know, go out here and, you know, play basketball for, you know, this program. For Chris, did how he play kind of the five, six games before he got hurt alongside Cat and Rudy, is that kind of the blueprint for how you want to use him along with Cat and Rudy going forward this season? Yeah, I think for sure that was the most exciting, you know, basketball that we saw our team play in, in its entirety all season because we were all healthy. Uh, but that alone, like, we, you know, the Nas is such a versatile game um, and his skill, you know, it opens up just so much lineup flexibility with our team. Uh, and, uh, you know, whether he you know, backs up at the four, backs up the five, heck, we may even try to play them all three together, you know, just because there's so much skill there. And, uh, and, and with the size and, you know, the league is, everyone says the league's trending smaller, but when you have skilled big players, that's really what, you know, where the league, I think, is headed. So uh, he's a classic example of what a modern big looks like. Hey, Nas, Darren Wolfson from Channel 5. What were some of the keys to navigating last year, having that career year? After early in the year, there were games where you were playing five minutes, six minutes, nine minutes. How did you overcome that and have the year that you did? I mean, there's been so much uh, difficulties that I had to overcome in life. I mean, that was just another obstacle. I think it's another, you know, good story to tell uh, with the path of my career. Um, I'm gonna go out there and fight, do what I do best, no matter 
no matter who's in front of me, no matter the, the, the um, position I'm presented with, um, you know, I'm just go out there, like I said before, to play hard-nosed basketball and do what I do best. John Krasinski from The Athletic. Nas, there are people who would be in your shoes who would just go look for an opportunity for more playing time, starting role or whatever. What made it about this team that made you want to stick with what you have here and, and keep building with these guys? Um, the growth uh, that I've been, you know, I've been, I've been a part of, and then like you know, players like you know, Ant, Kyle, Jaden, uh, guys like you know, Carl, Cat, I mean, um, Rudy, you know, just guys like you know, those 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 are good, really good guys, and those guys who, who who are teaching me the game, and you know, who are um, who are there for me when I need them, and things like that. So like just the off the court aspects, um, you know, and then obviously on the court. You know, I'm going out there playing a basketball. They're helping me on the court as well. I just felt like I'm, it's closer than a job, you know, if, if, if that makes sense. Tim, you, you have other players, higher profile, maybe making a little more money and stuff, but is Nas one of those culture guys, do you think, locker room, work ethic and everything that really kind of can make a team go, bring it together? Yeah, I think he's, a, he's just a wonderful guy. I mean, he's selfless. If you, you know, he had opportunities elsewhere, um, but I think his – his kind of connectivity to the coach and the team and his teammates, um, how much his teammates love him. I can't tell you how many times throughout this process his teammates were calling, like, let's get Nas done, let's get Nas done. I'm telling them, let's get Nas done, let's get Nas done. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, you can't control uh, makes or misses or wins and losses, but I think you can control the type of people that you have in the building, and he's just a, a big-time guy. Um, as good as a player is, he's a, he's a better guy. So certainly who he is as a person brought us this day. Tim, you, on, in the macro, you do have a lot of money committed to big guys. But when you look at Nas and he's 23 and he has gotten so much better every year, is he one of those guys that you worry would almost like haunt you if he got away? I'm sorry, worry about what? Oh. Is he one of those guys where you worry about it might like haunt you um, if you let him get away? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's, I just, I, I, I think um, at 23 and, and his skill set, I don't think any of us know what his game is going to look like in a couple of years from now. Um, I know Coach and I are always on him. We think he's going to be an elite defender at several positions. Um, he, I know he gets sick of hearing from me some of the stuff I know he can be better at. So I think his game's ever evolving. And I, I think it's really exciting to be part of his kind of evolution as a basketball player and certainly will be better for it. Nas, were there various points throughout this year where you wondered if you'd be back? I, I didn't hear you. Were there various points throughout this year where you wondered if you would be back here? I mean, of course. I mean, uh, everybody has that that feeling there last year, the contract, you don't know what's going to happen, you know, everybody has that feeling. So, I mean, of course, I definitely had that feeling, but, you know, I stuck to my roots. Um, they believed in me. I believe in this program as well. So we came together and got the deal done. Dane Moore, Blue Wire. Uh, Naz, you, you came in initially as a, as a versatile player, but you're basically just playing center, not often next to another big. How, what does it look like to, to learn or develop skills that allow you to play next to a Carl or a Rudy over these past couple of years? I didn't hear you. What does it look like to, for you? How have you learned to play next to another big when you're on the, the floor over this last couple of years? Um, like just being coachable for one, and like just being able to adapt to the next guy in front of you. He might be able to do this, that, and the third. Uh, just being able to read and react or um, just being able to play off that person's abilities. Uh, talking is one thing that's going to help you tremendously throughout the game. Uh, just being able to, you know, read and react for the most part. And then, Tim, you said at the end of the season press conference that all decisions would kind of go through the lens of how it helps Ant. In what ways do you see Nas being able to help Ant on the floor and, and grow as a, a player himself? Again, his versatility on both ends. Um, and I think that's only going to continue to get better and better. He's, um, such a, he has such a unique ability to um, handle and play make from that four or five position. And then just as a teammate, uh, he and Ant are very tight. Um, I think both help each other, um, you know, to see where Nas was three, four years ago, to see where he is now, it's only, only at that place because of a tremendous work ethic. He's become obsessed with the game, obsessed with, you know, keeping his body right. So anytime you surround some of your best players with um, guys who are, who are as impactful culturally and obviously on the court as Nas, it's, you know, you do whatever you can to keep those guys. Chris, does Nas read and react, like he said, maybe as good as anyone else on the team? I'm sorry, can you repeat does that? He, does he read and react about as well as anybody on this roster? Yeah, for sure. He's got a, a great um, skill set, which allows him to be able to kind of, you know, control the game with the ball in his hands as well. Um, what he's really done, done, 
done uh, a good, good job of, which helps him play alongside other bigs, is kind of not changing how he plays too much. I think when we initially started playing him more at the four, he'd just run to the corner, maybe be a spot-up shooter, but we just encouraging him to put yourself in the actions where you can have, have great skill. Um, he's an excellent passer. Uh, I think something that we can actually tease out of him even more and more now that he's got his contract, he can pass instead of shoot. Uh, but for sure, yeah, and it's, you know we we love when he rebounds and brings it full court, which is just gives another whole dimension. Um, and so, yeah, for absolutely, like uh, really understands how to play like in space, and and that's a big key when you're playing around, particularly other big guys. Yeah. Ahmad Hicks, Fox Nine. Nas, Tim, this question can go for either of you. What's the significance of having this press conference here at the Boys and Girls Club instead of Target Center in the lobby? Um, I think uh, my rookie year, I came here and meet Jared Cobra, Jalen Noel. Uh, we we did the same event here, and um, I felt as though like I got a real connective uh, vibe from the, uh, the children here, and um, I was able to see the kids. And I actually went through this process as my, myself, uh, going to a boys and girls club when I was younger. So kind of got to give back as much as I could. What does it mean to have this press conference in, in front of all these young kids who may hope to be in your shoes one day? What's your message to them? Uh, anything is possible. You can go out there and any form, fashion of a job, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, you can be in the highest position of um, your ability as long as you put yourself to it. So uh, I think the hard work, dedication, no matter what um, job or, you know, profession you're in, uh, out there to, you know, bring your all and your, everything that you have to it. Nas Mike Max, WCCO. Uh, you know, I know you didn't play in the class, but you've seen Denver plenty of times. When you look at this team and the core team that you've got, the Timberwolves, what's the difference between you and Denver if Denver's the standard bearer right now in terms of where you need to be and how you get there? I, I can't really, I couldn't really hear you. Um, maybe just age. I think we could be that team, if not better, in the years to come, to be honest. Anyone else? All right, that's going to do it. Thank you to Tim Conley. Thank you to Chris Finch. Thank you to Nas Reed. And of course, thanks to everybody here uh, at Southside Village Boys and Girls Club for having us uh, this afternoon. Nas Reed, everyone. <laughs>